Welcome to Click Connect. This is our first show of the year. And guess what? It's being brought to you by our good friends over at Red Roof Franchising. A great alternative brand. If you're looking to reflag your hotel, if you're looking at extended stay, their prototypes, their dual brands, their soft brands, very exciting. And guess what? Our guest today is the Chief Development Officer of Red Roof, Mr. Matt Hostedler. Matt, welcome back to the show. How are you, my friend? I am doing fantastic. Glad to be back with you, Craig. Click Connect. It's awesome. Be and We're proud to be a sponsor. Um, listen, looking forward to seeing you and all the great industry uh, professionals and, and our customers uh, and customers-to-be uh, throughout the year at all these great events. Absolutely. We can't wait to see you as well and your team. Speaking of your team, you've had some growth in 2023 going into 2024. So what what are you really excited about for your growth in 2024, especially for your your established hoteliers and your new hoteliers that are coming on board to the Red Roof system? Awesome. Well, and thanks for that. You know, and as as you as you know, Craig, in 23, we were celebrating our 50th anniversary. Yep. So Ironically, our goal to open 50 hotels was synonymous with the amount of years that Red Roof has been in business serving customers, franchisees, and consumer alike. So um, we're very bullish on getting to that 50 number. So our year for the 50th anniversary uh, comes up in April, and we are poised uh, to continue that to get that number. Um, so we're very excited about that. And, you know, again, uh, our, our franchise development team, um, work their, you know, proverbial tails off uh, yep. in 2023 to build our pipeline with our core brand, Red Roof, our extended stay brand, Hometown Studios with dual brands alike, and our soft brand with Red Collection. We're quietly inching up the uh, uh, ladder with that, and we're very proud of the products that we have out there in our Red Collection. See, now, I love your Red Collection, and I've been, been a big proponent of it since its inception. Um, you know, I think, you know, the, the, the minimal, minimal amount of change that a, a brand, uh, that a boutique hotel would need to come into the system works to their favor. I love the fees involved on a soft brand. And I, I always believe that that res system, you know, adds to the bottom line. And it certainly makes things a lot easier when you're dealing with a lender for either an acquisition or a refinance. So I, I've always loved that. I can't wait to see you guys open one, say, Santa Monica, Newport Beach, the Gas Lamp. You know, San that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be yeah. awesome. So maybe, maybe uh, with this broadcast, uh, we'll find one of those uh, exciting developers that are willing to listen uh, and learn what Red Roof has to offer from uh, a yeah. brand perspective and a support perspective. I mean, because. You brand for a reason. You brand to be uh, um, served by the franchisor and um, get some of those services and products, um, you know, at a, at a level that make branding and uh, that sort of thing much more amenable to cost. So um, we've been again, we're not we're not pushing it fast. We're slow growth. I, I don't want to say slow growth. We're we're strategically growing it. Uh, yep. we, we initially started the, you know, calling it an opportunistic type growth. Our franchisees from Red Roof are our current owners of our soft brand, the Red Collection. So if you go onto our website and look for um, some of these properties like Costa Azul and Virginia Beach, and, um, you know, we have one in Cape Cod, the Mariner, um, yep. Spot X in Florida. These are beautiful properties. Another one in Tampa, a second Spot X. So we have our red collection franchise base, albeit small, starting to come back and do more with us. So that's very promising for us. Small yet powerful. And I love that. That's, uh, that is great. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Let's also talk about your dual branded hotels, because I think, especially with either an established dual brand that, you know, maybe it hasn't worked with their, their, their current flag but certainly for new construction, dual branded hotels make a lot of sense. There's a lot of economies of scale there. So typically, you know, what are you putting into your dual branded hotels? And 
what is what is the process like for somebody to reflag to a dual branded hotel with with Red Roof? Those are those are all great questions, and I'll try to hit them all. And if I don't, um, you know, bring me back around, right? You so, got it. You know, we 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 thought about this concept. We actually had franchisee was talking to us about it, and um, we just really started looking at it. Um, my, our team and you know presented it to uh, leadership and to um, our board uh, of of the company as well to say here's what we would like to do. So um, our inception of dual branding obviously came with conversion, and we've had some great conversions. We've had. Um, we have uh, Newcastle, Delaware, Interior Corridor property, um, uh, Hometown Studios in Red Roof with a franchisee. Um, up the road a piece, we have another interior or exterior corridor property that's a great dual branded property with a franchisee on our FAC board. Um, this It's a great, we're, we're, and we have 17 dual branded properties open and operating today, and we are pushing that 20th uh, quickly because we, we know what's in our backlog. So, um, these have been very, um, uh, in some cases opportunistic with franchisees in markets that are, um, starting to open up for, uh, extended stay, but they also may have uh, a large, um, uh, inventory of rooms that may be being rotated or sitting, uh, unoccupied. And they see that opportunity to invest in that, um, asset and build on that extended stay business. So we have a lot of properties that we have some of these properties that were already in our system as a red roof that we've converted, worked with, and now they're dual branded working out of one lobby. And uh, we just, they are elated uh, in some cases doing another one, not necessarily with their current red roof, uh, but with buying properties, uh, Aurora, Illinois, great franchisee opened up one there and, um, Again, I could just go on and on with great locations that are popping up. So we thought, okay, this is really transforming into something that could be big. Um, so, you know, the the little engine that can right. in in uh, Columbus, Ohio here went to bat and said, listen, we need a prototype. So yeah. we've taken that prototype to our, uh, we have taken the prototype to our, um, you know, our engineer architects and said, listen, take this box that we have here with our hometown studios and let's move this into a dual brand. So we have um, product, we have a extended stay uh, new prototype that's been re re-engineered as well for more value um, after COVID. And then we took that same um, box and had them value engineer re-engineer into a 50, 50 uh, dual branded property or where one side's red roof and the other side's hometown studios. And I'm uh, currently working on our third and fourth opportunity franchising with that today. Love it. Love it. Yeah, that it just makes so much sense. And, and speaking about making sense, hometown studios has been a hit for you guys. Uh, the extended stay product has been the favorite child since 2020, basically, even, even before. Um, so you've, you're getting a lot of traction across the country with Hometown Studios. Would you tell the audience about Hometown Studios and, you know, what what's making that so successful for you guys? Well, first of all, what makes us successful is our franchisees and their commitment to um, our, our thought leadership and where we want to take a brand, specifically Hometown Studios in this case, where we want to take it. Now, the industry has also helped that. Um, talking about its existence, talking about its um, growth uh, and the opportunity and the fact that it's, you know, it's on the gas. It's not letting up anytime soon. As we all know, like every day we wake up, it's like, ping, there's another brand that comes out, which which in a lot of cases is OK, because these particular hotel companies may or may not have had an extended stay brand like us. We, right. I mean, we have we we start we launched the brand with. Um, you know, 50 plus uh, properties, meaning, uh, and we, they were conversions with a, yeah. with a light conversion uh, with those hotels. And we've morphed it into a bigger conversion process now with those. In some cases, some properties being sold, moved out and other properties moving in in markets that are taking over. So it's an, it's an upper economy brand, uh, yeah. extended stay seven to seven or more days. Um, it's a model that if most people don't understand it, 
um, they may fail with it. So yeah. it's all about less is more and uh, days staying longer uh, and operational expense being less. So in our world of labor issues, um, product issues, you know, customers wanting to get the market stay longer and the gig workers, people out there working longer and have that ability to work remote and travel and travel um, for their own purposes, but work during the week. Um, they yeah. can go to an extended stay property, albeit a hometown studios or any of the other brands that are out there and um, stay a while, enjoy the market and also work during their you know, scheduled hours. So it's it's really a great brand. Our franchisees have um, embraced it. Um, we have six new construction under development, one or two that should open this year in Florida. Oh, I should say two, uh, one for sure, a second one likely that will open as a, a new builds in Florida. And we're very, very excited about those. So, and we have other people that are really, you know, it's kind of like the Mikey Life Cereal story, right? Some people want to, they, were, they weren't sure about nice. Life Cereal, right? Then they finally got Mikey to try it. So all those Mikeys out here, um, you know, are now talking to us about extended stay with Red Roof. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a, again, we're a, a small hands-on organization, you know, approaching 700 properties, but, you know, we're still very, very involved with our franchisees, helping our entrepreneurs become successful and stay successful. Well, knowing you as well as I do, I know you're always in front of your customers, your clients. And I know as part of your culture, you've expanded that down to your franchise development team. You've got to be touching them, whether it's electronically, you know, via email or text message or a phone call, and you've got to be seeing them in person as well. And I think, you know, your success, you know, starts with you, my friend, as being the chief development officer. You know, the board is giving you some great products and giving you the opportunity to expand on those. And that's what I like is your company's very nimble. OK, you, you can you can stop on a dime and change directions. And it's about saying yes and about finding a way to put the deal together and not saying no. And I think that's what we all need. Yeah. How many employees? Craig, I, I, have, I have to, I got to tell you something based on that comment. Thank you so much. We sure. really, really do um, actively participate with and listen to our customers, our yeah. franchisees, because they're the, they're the boots on the ground. They're the ones serving the customer, the heads in the bed. So yeah. it's very important for us to understand, you know, we obviously operate um, hotels uh, and hotels in our brands as well. So we, we get the pulse from our managed assets, but we also really listen to the pulse of our FAC and our brand um, franchise owners. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And I got to tell you, every time now, I haven't had the, the privilege of attending one yet, but every time I hear post owners meeting at Red Roof, it's nothing but positive. OK, it's it's your owners said, you know, we get a chance to not only speak and mix and network with everybody, but they hear us right. and they implement our suggestions. Or they bring us back for more meetings to try and hone something. It's a good idea, but it just might need a little bit of tweaking. And you're not hearing about that with a lot of other companies. So that's that's one of the things that I find really exciting about Red Roof and and everything that you're doing. Um, you know, let, let's let's go into. I I, I want to touch on one other thing with Red Roof in particular. You know, Red Roof Advantage. Learn, manage, lead, and grow. The power of education. And I think this was a good segue into that. Would you tell the audience about that, please? Well, I, thank, thank you, Craig. And, you know, there's so many uh, benefits to branding and franchising. And, you know, you understand when franchising started was, um, what, in the late 80s, early 90s. I mean, it was a set of systems and tools that helps an entrepreneur become successful. So if you don't build upon these sets of 
systems and tools and offerings and your marketing and strategies and, you know, being uh, staying relevant and being ahead of the curve, um, you know, you'll be left behind. So, um, you know, through um, our years, obviously, of being a brand 50, um, you know, we've we've developed a lot of systems and tools on our own. Um, we've outsourced systems and tools that that are still with us today and continue to look at all of these things. Uh, but, you know, as a as an entrepreneur and a GM slash owner, um, you know, whenever you are getting ready to open your property, you know, six weeks in advance, we want you learning about our brand. We, if, you know, salespeople, development salespeople can only tell a franchise applicant or prospect so much. Um, it's the real experts in the building, in the room, if you will, um, that share their knowledge and their training to help these entrepreneurs become successful. So, you know, talking about brand stand, first of all, like the mission and philosophy of your own company, be aligned, um, understanding all of that, learning brand topics, doing homework, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, there's homework in owning a business. So brand standards, a really, really important one today that we take really, really uh, a, a lot of, um, uh, we put a lot of effort into is our human trafficking prevention training. That's right. important that each and every one of our properties are um, trained and signed off on and do it every year. We're going through it already uh, from a corporate perspective and our franchisees for 2024. Our rewards program, oh. you know, property management systems, basics, you know, understanding diversity, equity and inclusion all of our in-opening processes. So that's all about learning the brand. Then you got to learn about how to manage it. Now, all of these yeah. things, you don't necessarily have to come to our Columbus office to learn all of these things, right? So we're doing this, you know, because we had to become hybrid, if you will, during COVID, we've learned how to shift gears. So, you know, we have a blend of virtual online and like training modules that people can some take at, you know, their own pace or they need to be scheduled and, you know, they may be across the country with other people taking them. So learning about our ready, uh, ready, clean programs, how to do repairs, preventive maintenance, that sort of thing. There's a lot of things, understanding what our quality expectations are. So and then growing the brand, obviously, um, you know, I, there's so many other things we could talk about. But, you know, sales, our national account sales team is very robust. Um, and, you know, they're you know, in each vertical out there, government, sports, um, you know, uh, Smurf, all of that sort of uh, yeah. travel, business, uh, national account trucking, all that sort of thing. We're out there, national account selling. We put a, we have a ready bill program in place, which brings all of this billing into one, um, one single source from our office in Columbus that takes care of that effort and collection away from our franchisee. And, and it, let me tell you something. It was probably about six years ago we we put this in place, and it's probably been one of the most successful programs I've seen implemented here at Red Roof in my 10 years as of last week wow. um, that I've been with the brand. I've seen a lot of successful programs. Yeah. And now our revenue management program it continues to grow, and our, and our properties that are joining it see the difference of what the, how they were doing uh, on yeah. the program versus not on the program. So a lot of great things to grow with marketing or medallion program. So um, we have everything to offer uh, for every franchisee uh, prospect in economy, upper economy and um, mid scale uh, soft branding is an extended stay. I love it. And I love it. That you got your thumb on the pulse of what's going on out there. So my last question before we go into the lightning round, my friend, Lending for hotel development, okay? Repositioning, deep renovations, repositioning, ground up. The Fed said they'll possibly have three cuts to the interest rate in 2024, which I was saying that early on last year because typically, and you know this as well as I do, in an election year, if the Feds have been raising the rates, they always come down prior to the, the national election. So some party can claim credit for it. Uh, right. What are you hearing out there from the lenders? What are they telling you? Uh, because they're, they're our lifeblood for new development, okay? And, you know, without them, uh, we've got no growth. We've got, to ha we've got to have new product. We've got to have ground-up construction. We've got to be able to borrow the money to do a renovation to reflag a hotel, um, a refinance of the hotel. Uh, 
Um, what are you, what are you hearing from the, the lenders that, that your clientele and yourself are dealing with? Well, you know, you, you kind of um, said some of the things that we're hearing from the lenders, the franchisees, and some of the things that may have been holding some of the projects up in our pipeline um, and probably other people's pipelines as well, because, um, you know, we may be, uh, you know, a 700 hotel type company, but, you know, the 7,000 hotel companies, they're up against the same thing. So, um, you know, we're, you know, with these, you know, I heard a, a few more uh, cuts than you had. I, you know, I read an article that said, you know, four to five uh, and a soft landing for the economy, you know, from inflation and that sort of thing. But what I can tell you is simply this. We need the cost of money to come down as it should and it will. And it will spark this opportunity for product development, um, you know, products to be uh, manufactured for us to do our renovations um, the transportation, the whole nine yards, that's going to even spark, in my opinion, will spark the economy more. And you will see more of these caps on <laughs> properties, building red roofs for Love our it. system, our hometown studios. And frankly, we signed a new construction red collection. So we're going to be very excited about that property and being part of its inception. It's create, it's being created and wow. uh, just being a part of it to watch a watch another new construction red collection come to fruition, much like the Spot X did in Orlando, Florida. So, Love but, it. you know, go back to the renovations. You know, people want to renovate their hotels. They want to bring yeah. it up to standards. You know, the PIPs are out there. People are pr processing through PIPs, finalizing PIPs. In some cases, some people are done. You know, a lot of these loans can fa fall under the uh, SBA. Um, so, you know, that that's going to help. Obviously, I still, you know, we still need them to, you know, if we can increase that number, it, um, you know, great. Uh, so at the end of the day, the cost of money coming down is going to help everybody. It's going to help jobs. It's going to help uh, construction. It's going to help hotels opening. It's going to help renovation. And frankly, the, the, um, uh, the, the sales of hotels as well. Somebody's going to, there's going to be more transactions there. And right. when transactions happen, conversion opportunities happen for us. So yep. that's it in a nutshell. Love it. Love it. All right, my friend, you ready for the lightning round? Do I need my hard hat for this? You might. <laughs> Producer Danny is going to put two minutes on the clock. Word association, first thing that comes to mind. Ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. Favorite sport. Football. Favorite year the Corvette was made? 1953. Nice. Movie or play? Movie. Favorite band, group, duo, or solo artist? Dave Matthews. Nice. Social media? Instagram. Aisle or window? Aisle. Streaming or cable? Stream. Hotel lobby? Open. Best restaurant in the city you live in? Devon Seafood. Nice. You did that with a minute nine. Yeah. 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 We're going to have to have Danny check to see if that was a new record. So that was great, my friend. I know awesome. you've got to get back to a meeting. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you for supporting Click Connect. Thank you for also being a founding sponsor of the 7th Annual California Lodging Investment Conference. Matt, how can people get a hold of you to start that talk about coming over and being a franchisee with you? Well, first of all, you can check redrooffranchising.com. Hit the contact button. You'll see my mug and you'll see our team. Um, all of their information is there as well, depending on the region in which you're in. Um, Redroof.com, Redroof Franchising, 862-812-0005 uh, is my direct line. Um, I do answer. Uh, and if I don't answer, I will call you back within 24 hours. And I want to say thank you, Craig, for what you're doing, uh, your team. Uh, looking forward to your event. And I want to wish everybody that is uh, chiming in listens, listens in the future. The best of luck for 2024. Godspeed.
Thank you, my friend. I'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you so much. What a great episode. You know, having Matt on the show is always one of the best. He always brings a great conversation and a lot of energy to the conversation. I know you can see that while you're watching this video. So this is the end of our first episode of 2024. It's good to be back working with producer Danny. Couldn't pick a better guest to kick off uh, the rest of this season nine in 2024. Matt Hostetler is just, just an absolute delight and one of the best people out there. Thank you for watching us today. Remember to give Red Roof a call. Matt would love to hear from you. And remember, come join us on March 6th and 7th, 2024 at the Westin South Coast Plaza Hotel for the 7th Annual California Lodging Investment Conference. If you're in the California hotel market or want to be, this is the event you should attend. We've got owners, operators, management companies. We've got brands. We have got lenders still making loans. We've got designers, architectural firms, brokers, insurance carriers. Everybody you need will be in one room. So join us March 6th and 7th, and you can register at cliconference.com. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, producer Danny. And remember to be kind, share your knowledge. Now go be amazing.